Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Barry. This Sith Lord is a metalhead. How's everything going? Hope everybody's doing good. Today is August 28th, Saturday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> weird week, weird week, weird week all around. Uh, one of the things I want to discuss, basically, um, I don't know if, if some of you are already aware, um, have seen me. Um, I actually have a Facebook page, uh, This Sith Lord's Merch. If you get a chance, go on Facebook, check it out. Um, give you a chance to go and check out some of the merchandise that's there in case you guys are interested in um, purchasing any merch. So, with that being said, I also joined a lot of um, Star Wars groups. Uh, you know, a lot of Star Wars groups, Mandalorian groups, Ahsoka groups. Um, I joined some uh, some metal groups for you know for my other my other channel, but you know because everybody knows I'm a huge metalhead as well. So, you know, uh, but one of the big things that we've been discussing, a lot of fans, uh, you know, considering that Marvel uh, has been putting, you know, they're doing their what if, even though they're doing it totally wrong, uh, you know, just the old school what if fan from back in the day, you know, but. Um, People were talking about uh, doing a Star Wars style what if. So, a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, but they can't, you know, it, 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 that Star Wars doesn't have a multiverse. But again, people were in that mindset that uh, what if was about the multiverse when that's not, that was never the case. What if, when it first came out, was one story what if? taking a certain time of, of the story and seeing how it would have turned out. And usually that was a lot of, um, you know, fan stuff. Things that fans wanted to see and Marvel did it. Uh, now, if they do it for Star Wars, uh, they do it right, it would actually be, I think it would be pretty popular. One-shot stories. Nothing interchanging, nothing saying that this is going to be part of a new universe or new timeline or whatever. What if? What if? Now, people have been throwing a lot of real what ifs. I threw my little fair share in there. And um, I have three. Three. That I think would be pretty good. Uh, let's just see. I mean, uh, uh, at, the, at the same token, we're going to put a hash, we'll put hashtag Star Wars what if. Because since a lot, of, a lot of fans have been talking about it. And I think that basically... I don't see why it wouldn't be an issue with them doing it. You know, animation, you know, they can do animation. It doesn't have to be live action. Um, animation would be cool, but these are the three that I would like to see. Uh, one of the ones I put up a few times on uh, some of the posts were, what if Leia was a spy for Palpatine? That would be a nice twist. Uh, you know, the, fa the twist would be, to me, would be more like, uh, Palpatine already knew Leia is Vader's daughter. Vader's in the mix. But while he's already manipulated Vader, he already manipulated he went and he manipulated Leia and probably threw some things in her head about Vader being her real father and you know basically having her uh, uh, be pissed off at him but then work for a Palpatine at the same time to give her some stuff. You know? And uh, that would be a nice twist. I, I think, you know, the fact that, you know, you would have Leia already being uh, an agent for Palpatine and nobody would see it. It would just be a, a nice twist and and it would just go different ways. And I, I just think that would be pretty cool. Uh, you know, tell me what you think. Right? My second one. Uh, considering that they've been talking about... Uh, the Mandoverse, if it's going to connect to the sequel trilogy, which in some ways and forms it is. Um, a lot of speculation is about Luke training Grogu, right? And if he was going to be one of the, the students that was in his uh, Jedi Academy when uh, Ben Solo turned to the dark side and so on, right? So this is my what if. What if Grogu, not Ben, Went to the dark side. Now, this is my, my, my thing of how that would work out. Well, well, what happened is that we already know how close Grogu is with uh, Din Djarin, right? I'm sure there's going to be some interactions with them along the lines, you know, that he sees him as his father. And he's grown a, a nice attachment to Din Djarin and, you know, you know, Din sees him as his son. Uh, we already know... Um, 
attachments and all that stuff, you know, you know that that stuff leads to the dark side. And what would happen if Din Djarin gets killed in front of Grogu or something of that thing where he 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 just loses it and murders the per kills the person who killed his father and goes down that path. I uh, can you imagine what kind of arc that would be for Grogu to turn to the dark side? Considering Ahsoka already gave the warning on why she didn't want to train him. So you could play all that in there. That would be beautiful. You know, you could start a night that you know, that's a nice little story you could go through with that. Again, one story, so you know, it was it, it was never gonna happen, but it would be cool, you know? I think that would be a great story. Uh, last, I, this is something I just threw into the mix. People will probably saw that and say, oh, that's piss trash. But um, considering Omega is basically the sister of Boba Fett. Because, you know, oh, Boba Fett was the alpha. Omega is Omega, which I, I'm hoping that in the second season of The Bad Batch, they give her an actual name. Because, I mean, Boba, Boba Fett wasn't going to be named Alpha. So, he, you know, uh, Django named him Boba. And, you know, so I would think that maybe eventually they would give her a name. So, what if, what if Omega was hired by Vader to hunt down Han Solo in the Millennium Falcon instead of Boba Fett? You know, I, there's already been some uh, fan drawings going around with... Um, Omega, that you know, she had seen her in like in a white Mandalorian style suit, uh, out you know, armor. I, I you know, the people in a fan art and stuff, and it's, it looks pretty cool. You know, I think that would be pretty interesting to see where her story is going to go anyway in the Bad Batch. I mean, there's rumors that uh, she might come out in the Book of Boba Fett or one of the um, one of the, the, the you know, the, the shows that I mean, coming on with Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka. Uh, you know, we, we don't know. You know, I mean, it would be pretty interesting, you know, to see that uh, when Vader asks for the bounty hunters, you see, you know, Omega in a white Mandalorian armor going after Han Solo and everybody. You know, it, it, it would just, I think it would be a nice little, you know, nice little thing right there. But, you know, that, that's, my, that's my three. I mean, you guys could agree, disagree on that. Um, you know, I guess some, a lot of y'all have stuff, but you know, this is what, what, what we do as fans. We'll throw it out there, and uh, you know, let's just hope that um, you know we get a hashtag going, hashtag Star Wars What If, and you know, maybe uh, Favreau and Filoni will see it, and maybe they'll put something on the side for that. That would actually be pretty cool. You know, I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, in other news, okay, there's been a lot of talk about um, Finn. Uh, they're trying to get uh, his own Disney Plus show. Um, honestly, I never really had a problem with Finn's character. Uh, I, I, he's one of the characters I felt they did dirty in the sequels. Uh, him, Captain Phasma, you know, um, they they brutalized his character. Along, you know, Luke, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you we, we already had, we thought that we were gonna have. Uh, a different character, you know, uh, you know, force user, maybe a long array, you know, it would have been something really cool, um, but who knows, but now, you know, they're talking about doing his, uh, a show for him, maybe to, I guess, give him some type of redemption, and, uh, from my understanding, I think John, John Morega is, is, uh, on board with it, um, you know, you know, I, I would actually give it a chance, I mean, I'm not a fan of the sequel trilogy, but, it, but, you know, some of the characters they did have on uh, in the movies were actually okay. I, you know, Finn and Captain Phasma were two of the ones I actually thought had some good, you know, and Kylo Ren. But, but like I said, they brutalized those characters. They didn't do nothing good with them anyway. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but um, last but not least, uh, before I get to my Hall of the Week, um, I guess it was foreseen. Um Mandalorian season three will be the last of the Mandalorian. I guess as far as Din Djarin's story arc, I guess it's going to be pretty much. And not to say that he might not pop up in other shows, but from my understanding, that's pretty much what's going to be. I mean, it would be. I mean, it would be kind of messed up. I, you know, we, you know, that that maybe in that season, maybe he gets killed off, or you know, 
Maybe we'll get my, you know, Grogu going to the dark side thing in there. Who knows? That, that would actually be pretty cool. But, uh, you know, look, it, you know what? I, I think I kind of foreseen that it was going to be maybe three episodes, three seasons anyway. I mean, uh, some of the bickering that's going on too. I mean, I'm sure Pedro Pascual is not going to do it and want to do it anymore anyway after that. Um, you know, they could just pretty much get, you know, anybody to play him as far as putting on the helmet and, you know, popping up in shows here and there, you know. So, um, we'll see how that goes, you know. I mean, that would actually be pretty interesting, you know, to see how it's going to run out, you know, season three, you know, and all the other shows that are going to be coming up, bro. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, here we go. Let's go to my haul of the week. All right, I want to thank uh, the guys again over at the Spider's Web, um, over here in Yonkers, uh, 887 Yonkers Avenue, right across from the raceway. When you go in there, see Andrew and Paul, tell them that this Sith Lord sent you, and they'll definitely hook you guys up, all right? Okay, let's go. What we got here first, Dr. Akma, number 13, okay? As you can see, War of the Bounty Hunters, man. This thing is just going to keep on going. I, I guess it's going to be a never-ending, you know, thing. But, you know, it, it is what it is. We're just going to keep going with it. Um, at this point, I just, you know, I'm trying to disregard this whole War of the Bounty Hunters logo. Just look at the what we got going on. Uh, again, my theory is that it's going to keep on going until we get the Book of Boba Fett. I guess you know, it's just maybe getting more people intrigued to actually try to buy the comic books. Considering the Book of Boba Fett is going to be coming out, so... I, I think that's pretty much where it's going. Okay. Uh, we got Vader number 15. All right. Everybody's been keeping up so far, you know. Guess we'll keep going from there. And also, again, I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna stress it enough. Okay. There's a few people who are not really big fans of it, but I you know I actually uh, take away from some of the way that they were drawing the the aliens, but there's alien number six, and again, like I said in my previous videos. Uh, fantastic storyline. I'm, I'm not going to front. The storyline is very intriguing. I enjoy it. Very, very good stuff. Um, you know, if you can look past... I mean, if you're a hardcore fan of Aliens, you can look past the way some of the, the Xenomorphs are being drawn. I mean, you know, I know it's it, 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 it eats at your soul a little, but the story and how, what I was going... It's pretty cool. All right? Uh, Alien, all right, give it a go. All right? Then, of course, like again... Uh, can't go wrong with Conan. One thing Marvel seems to be doing okay with, uh, just keep Conan brutal. That's all I'm asking. All right? Keep Conan brutal. Conan number 24. All right. And, of course, we got Cult of Dracula number 6. Yeah, I, I, I'm just loving the fact that um, they just keep these covers are fantastic. I mean, the artwork inside is good. Uh, you know, it's good, it's good stuff. You know, but the covers, they've just been... Yo, the covers are beautiful. Beautiful covers. Cult of Dracula, number six. All right? Ah, man, another good another good uh, pickup that I've known. Midnight Western Theater, number three. Uh, this is actually, this is a big surprise. Very, very good story. I, you know, I, I like some some of the old school Western stuff, and they just throw some vampires in it. Very, very cool stuff. All right? All right, Midnight Western number Theater, number three. All right. And also, I made this in another video where I was talking about how... Um, some of these comic book creators now, you know, they at least pushing out. If they're gonna do diversity, they're gonna do, you know, do it right. All right, we got dark. Finally, got dark blood number two, and I've, I've been looking so forward to this. Uh, the first issue, fantastic, fantastic first issue. This is how you do it, Disney and and uh, DC and Marvel. Create your own characters and it's fantastic so you got to do create your own characters all right okay all right seven swords number three um i don't know i i might give it one more issue after this it started you know the first issue was okay second one was in you know i'll give it one more yeah you know? but um you know the artwork and everything in this is pretty cool um you know this is, you know as you can see the panels here all right I'm gonna give it one more. I mean, I'm hoping, hopefully, this issue doesn't disappoint me. Okay. Then I uh, saw this here from Top Cow Comics. I haven't seen Top Cow Comics in a little while. Uh, book here called Saint Mercy. All right. I believe it has something to do with um, uh, 
It's a female, you know, somewhere in the in maybe in the 1800s, and I guess in Mexico, as you got over here with the um, Amazons and stuff. It looks pretty cool. Um, I give it a go. Check it out. Um, see what it's really all about. But uh, you know, worth it's worth the shot. Okay, and last but not least, the comic book that is just growing throughout the land and bringing back American comics back because Matt Manga is just destroying everybody. But we got to give this guy his props. King Spawn, number one. Look at that! Look at that, man. That is so glorious. Tom McFarlane, man. You know you you're making a comeback, young comebacks. This is fantastic. You know. Um, looking forward to reading it. Um, you know, I've always I've been a big fan of Spawn. You know, I, I when it first came out on Image back in '92, had no problems with it. Great stuff. But uh, that's it for now, guys. All right. So look, uh, tell me what you think about my what ifs. Uh, you know, if you like them, you don't like them, tell me, give me your what ifs. Um, hope to see you guys on the group chats and, uh, you know, the pages and stuff. Let me know what you think. Also, as well, like I said, I have uh, my merch store. Uh, I just put this a bit of a sale that's just been put out because I had a buy to get uh, free shipping. So we're trying to put something up towards uh, the end of September. So we got uh, buy two, get the third one half off with the free shipping. All right, anybody's interested? Please go on my Facebook, this uh, the Sith Lords merch. Check out some of the stuff we got there. Hit me up with a message, and uh, we'll go from there. All right? All right, guys. That's it for now. This is Barry. This Sith Lord is a metalhead, and this is Scar. Say hi to Scar. Scar, say hi. There we go. Scar just loving Star Wars right there, too. You see that? <laughs> Cheers, guys. May the Force be with you.